Well, hello everyone and welcome to the New Jersey Association for College Admission Counseling College Fair. We are so excited to have y'all participating in this event and have some really fantastic schools here with us today. Each of them will have about six minutes to share more about their institution. But they will be around for the entire session to answer all of your questions. My name is Karis and I will be serving as your facilitator for tonight. And so before we get started, I have just a few housekeeping items. The first one, you've already noticed your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can, however, use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of the many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the schedule on the website. And then finally, this presentation is being recorded and will be available to you at strivescan.com slash New Jersey. Those are all the announcements I have for you all, and so I would love to go ahead and turn it over um, to our first institution and presenter for tonight, which is Ryder University. Hi, hello everybody. Uh, sorry about that, a little technical difficulty. Uh, my name is Ryan Davila. I am one of the assistant directors here at the Ryder University Admissions Office. I'm just sharing my screen here for a second, uh, just to get us started for today. Um, but at Ryder University, uh, we are around 3,600 students strong. Um, our class average class sizes are around uh, 14 to 15 per. Uh, we have a really great campus, uh, 11 to 1 student to teacher ratio. Um, and we have students coming from 36 states, um, 53 countries overall, and uh, two um, US territories. Uh, one in four students also are first gen students. So we have a really diverse um, student population here at Ryder. We have over 70 undergraduate majors um, between our four schools, but uh, specifically in the science, uh, sciences, we're building and adding more majors every single year. So you can see things like behavioral neuroscience, biology, chemistry, computer science and cybersecurity, as well as many others. Uh, we also have some fifth year graduate options uh, and we're adding more of these as well. Uh, one of our big programs is our four, our four plus two uh, with Thomas Jefferson University for athletic training. So you would start with us and then finish off with them on the grad level. Um, and also we have started building up our uh, resources for our next generation of scientists. So earlier this year, we actually finished all of our state-of-the-art laboratories uh, with new classroom spaces. Um, just at the top of this year, our new science technology center allows the university to meet all of the evolving needs of a, a really great uh, science education. Um, and this project began two years ago, uh, right before the pandemic started, or right as the pandemic was kind of in full swing. Uh, we were given $9 million to create these modern labs, classroom spaces, and things like this uh, to kind of bring on this culture of collaboration uh, within the sciences. Uh, and we have a lot of really successful um, Bronx in uh, the field right now, uh, whether it's in mathematics, environmental studies, biology, uh, getting really great jobs with some of the, the most um, well-known and some of the top companies that are offering jobs within uh, the science fields right now, whether it's in sustainability or um, research. And uh, overall, uh, we always uh, advise our students, our prospective students to visit campus. So we always have open houses um, and uh, some of our deadlines uh, for every fall are right here. So we always have an early action deadline for applications, uh, preferred deadline in January, priority uh, filing for FAFSA, and then our enrollment deadline every single year is always May 1st, as it is with many schools. Um, but we just want to make sure that our students kind of know the application timeline. We also have a lot of different ways to visit. So you can either take a regular campus tour, come to one of our open houses. Uh, we usually have a couple in the fall and one in the spring, uh, but we have tours that run year round. We also offer students the opportunity to be drunk for a day, uh, which allows you to kind of do a day in the life of a student. And if you accrue three visits or more, if you do decide to enroll, um, you will get a $1,000 textbook credit that will come with you when you start uh, your freshman year. Uh, but that's pretty much it for me. Thank you guys so much, and I'll be able to answer your questions later on. I'll also be dropping a registration link uh, so you can get more information about Ryder uh, in the chat. Thank you. All right, up next, we've got SUNY New Pals. 
Uh, my name is Abigail. I am a freshman admission advisor at SUNY New Paltz. Um, not only do I have the pleasure to work for SUNY New Paltz, but I'm also an alum. Um, I graduated in 2015. Uh, so um, just a little bit about SUNY New Paltz. Uh, we are a SUNY school, which just means that we are a New York State school located in New Paltz, New York. Um, and we are so proud of our location in New Paltz uh, because we are located smack dab in the middle of uh, the Hudson Valley area. So uh, we are an hour and a half north of New York City, an hour and 20 minutes south of the capital of Albany. Uh, and we also are uh, 15 minutes away from the Shuangunk Mount Mountains. Uh, and uh, uh, we're kind of close to some larger cities, Kingston, Poughkeepsie, and Newburgh. So this is really great for our students for um, internship opportunities, of course, uh, but also it's really great for students um, for research projects, especially students in our STEMs uh, and our STEM fields. Uh, so it's really uh, a, a wonderful location for our students. Uh, so we offer over 100 majors and 50 minors uh, that our students can choose from. And I know that this is kind of a STEM specific uh, event today, but in addition to our um, science, math, technology, and engineering, uh, we also have our School of Education, our School of Business, our College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, and our Fine and Performing Arts. And our students are really uh, interested in studying more than just one thing. So we have students typically majoring in one thing, minoring in something totally different. We really try to not limit our students in any way. So if you are interested uh, in uh, you know, majoring in biology and minoring in ceramics, you can do that. Uh, but in addition to all of our wonderful programs, I just want to talk about the application process. Um, so here at um, New Paltz, you can apply using either the common application or the SUNY application. We do not have a preference, so whichever one you feel most comfortable filling out is perfectly fine for us. Uh, after we look at your application, we'll be looking at your high school transcript. Um, we do look to see that you've completed four years of English, four years of social studies, three to four years of a science with a lab, two to four years of a language other than English, and three to four years of math. Of course, you must complete Algebra two trigonometry uh, for admission into any of our STEM majors. Um, we're looking, the average of our accepted students have about a 3.5 GPA or higher. Uh, we do take higher than that 3.5, of course, but we also take a little bit lower than that 3.5. It is the average of our accepted students. Um, and after we're looking at your, your high school transcript, we'll be looking at your uh, letters of recommendation. We require at least one letter from a teacher or a guidance counselor. Uh, we'll be reading an essay, um, but we are completely test optional for our students uh, applying for fall of 2023. So even if you are interested in engineering or um, computer science, uh, anything like that, we will still be test optional for those students. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. It will not negatively impact your application if you choose to not submit those test scores. Um, and I also want to talk about some due dates. So we have early action admission is non-binding. It just means if you apply to us by Janu by I'm sorry, by November 15th, then we guarantee you a decision by January 1st, but you have several months to decide you have from January 1st until May 1st to decide if you'd like to attend New Paltz uh, in the fall. So um, if you are not interested in applying early, that's okay. Uh, the due date for general admission applications is going to be May 1st. Um, so the, the application does go live on the SUNY application and the common application on August 1st. Um, so you do have quite a bit of time to decide if you'd like to uh, apply to SUNY New Paltz and get all of those application materials to us. Um, in addition to uh, our how to apply to our school, um, something that's really great about the SUNY system is that we have over a thousand programs programs for our students to choose from for studying abroad. Uh, you can study abroad on six out of the seven continents. Uh, and we have programs for all of our majors, as well as volunteering opportunities abroad, internships abroad, and research abroad. Uh, I have a colleague that studied abroad in Australia, and they weren't, they didn't step foot in the classroom. They were at the Great Barrier Reef doing uh, research. So that was a really wonderful opportunity for them. In addition to that, we have over 200 majors and 50, I'm sorry, we have over 200 clubs and organizations for our students to choose from. So we have clubs for all of our majors. Uh, we also have division three sports, club sports, intramural sports, as well as just fun things to do uh, after class uh, in, in those clubs as well, whatever, whether it be hiking club or video gaming club, in-person gaming clubs, different things like that. Um, we do offer uh, summer tours. So we'd love to have you on our campus. So you can sign up for those tours on our website. Uh, but since this is a, uh, a STEM specific uh, 
uh, meeting today, I do want to kind of go over all the majors that we have within our, our STEM field. So we have astronomy, we do have a planetarium on campus, biology, biochemistry, chemistry, uh, computer science, we also offer that as a master's program, engineering, we offer computer uh, engineering, electrical engineering, and mechanical engineering. Uh, we have ge um, geological sciences, math, physics, um, but we also have some pre-med programs as well. Um, we have pre-med, pre-dental, pre-veterinarian, pre-physical therapy, and we also have a seven-year medical program partnership with Toro College and NYIT. Um, these are BSDO programs, uh, and they are really wonderful programs for optometry and also for students that are interested in studying osteopathic medicine. Uh, and one more thing before I wrap up, I always want to let our students know, especially our STEM students, that we do have um, a new science building. We also have a brand new engineering building that were built um, in the last couple of years. So that means better lab spaces, more lab spaces, better lab equipment um, for our students. So, um, you know, definitely keep us in mind. I'll throw some more information uh, in the chat for you. Thank you so much. All right, we will keep things going tonight with the University of Wyoming. Good evening, everybody. Can everybody see my screen okay? Perfect. We'll go ahead and get right into things. My name is Logan Weinhold. I'm an admissions rep for the University of Wyoming. Um, I'm also an East Coast native. Um, I grew up in Maryland, came halfway across the country to here to the University of Wyoming, where I got my degree in criminal justice with a minor in sociology and geography. Um, so if you have a student that's looking for a grand adventure, um, I cannot make a better suggestion than the University of Wyoming. So during this presentation, I'm going to share with you what we offer here at UW. Um, University of Wyoming is located in Laramie, Wyoming. Um, we're the number one small college town in the nation, 40 years running, which is something we're really proud of. Um, we sit at 7,220 feet above sea level. Um, we're the highest division one campus in the country. So I'd say that we're above the rest here in Laramie, Wyoming. Um, on top of that, if you like outdoors, if you like outdoor activities, look no further than UW. We got you covered. Uh, if you like skiing, snowboarding, we're only 30 minutes away from a local ski area called Snowy Range Ski Area that is actually affordable for our students. Usually skiing, snow sports, and affordable don't go together. However, they do here at UW. Um, it's about $50 for a lift ticket for a day. Um, and they do a season discount pass for our students as well. If you like hiking and biking, we're only 15 minutes away from over 100 miles of hiking and biking trails. We have 2.9 million acres of national forest that surround our campus. So the opportunities for outdoor adventures are absolutely endless. Along with, if you're new to the outdoors, we also have what we call our outdoor program. Um, where you, they can take you on guided trips, teach you rock climbing, show you the ropes, something like that as well with our trained guides. A little bit about our student body population here at UW. We have 11,000, a little over 11,000 students here on campus. 10,000 of these are undergraduate students. The rest are master's can students, PhD candidates, are law school students. Um, so by definition, we are a mid-sized university. We have an average class size of 30 and a student to faculty ratio of 14 to 1. So if you're looking for that one-on-one -on -one instruction, uh, we definitely have that here at UW while still maintaining a lot of energy on campus. Um, we're the only uh, the University of Wyoming doesn't have any professional sports, um, so the whole entire state turns out for our sporting events. We have 17 Division I athletics, uh, so campus has a lot of energy, a lot of excitement, a lot of fun going on with that as well. So if you're looking for that balance between big school field but small class sizes, we got you covered here at UW. Um, when it comes to our student body here as well, um, we have students represented from all 50 states and over 83 countries here on campus. So we do have a diverse population. 57% of our students are Wyoming residents, 43% are non-residents. This switches back and forth um, every year, so, so, so on. Um, what really makes UW very unique when it comes to the STEM area is that we're a nationally recognized research institution. What this means is that we prioritize hands-on learning and hands-on experiences. We have over $80 million that we just put into undergraduate research. Over 800 of our undergraduate students are involved, involved in research annually. And this really separates our students when they get to graduation, uh, which is why we are proud to say that we have one of the highest job placement rates in the country. Um, 
during COVID, right, nationally, a global pandemic, it's been a wild time. Only 46% of students were finding a job um, six months post-graduation. Here at UW, we were still sitting uh, at 79%. Uh, before COVID, we were sitting around that 89, 90% job placement rate post-graduation. So our graduates really do stand out because of these hands-on experiences that they get. Um, we have over 200 areas of study here at UW, about 85 um, bachelor degree programs that you can be a part of. You can double major, you can major minor. The possibilities are endless to, um, to find your new passions. Um, we are a tier one engineering institution as well. Um, what's really unique about all of our programs is they are direct admit except for nursing. Um, nurse, our nursing program has their own admissions process, but for everything else, we are direct admit. And I'll talk about those um, qualifications here in a second. Um, if you're interested in studying abroad, look no further than UW. We have the largest study abroad endowment in the nation. Um, thanks to our former vice president of the United States, Dick Cheney. Um, he set up the largest study in broad endowment for us. And so you can go over to 400 different locations worldwide, along with some domestic locations are available as well. We understand that as staff and faculty, we wouldn't be here without you as students, right? So student success is what we are here for, um, whether that's through academic and tutoring, which will be provided for every class that you take here at UW, emotional, mental health support, housing and finances, health and wellness. We are here to help you succeed as staff and faculty here at UW. When it comes to financial aid, we're the Cowboys right at the University of Wyoming. Part of being a cowboy is having integrity. One of the ways we like to do that is to help you know exactly how much school is going to cost you. One of the ways that we do that is through keeping our scholarship process extremely simple and extremely streamlined as possible. Um, what we have is what we call our brown and gold commitment grid. This is for our out of state students. The way that this grid will work is you'll find your unweighted high school GPA over here on this left column, your SAT, ACT score up here on the top find where they intersect on this grid, and this is how much money you will receive in scholarships. Um, if you are a senior um, this year, just about to graduate here in the next few weeks, unfortunately, this scholarship is closed. However, if you're a sophomore, junior, um, or freshman, um, this will still be available for you here in the coming future. Um, for fall of 2023, we're not sure if we're going to be test optional yet. May 1st is our confirmation deadline um, in order to lock in this Cowboy commitment or Brown and Gold commitment scholarship. Um, so keep that date in mind. If you confirm your enrollment after May 1st, you're still eligible to come to UW. However, the scholarship money will pass you by. Uh, missions requirements, four years of English, math, and science, what we're looking for, cumulative GPA, unweighted GPA of a 3.0 or higher. Um, when you can apply directly through our website, it's extremely um, streamlined process. We don't ask for any letters of recommendation. We're just going to ask for that high school transcript. Regardless of if you use the Common App, it'll be a $40 application fee with ever how you go about it. My name is Logan Weinholt. If you have any questions, please feel free to take a picture of this screen. I'll also post it in the chat here shortly. Thank you very much. All right, up next, we've got Keene University. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. My name is Daniel Flores, admission counselor at Kane University. For those of you who are not familiar with Kane University, we are located in Union, New Jersey. Uh, the population is about 16,000 undergraduate students. We also have a graduate school uh, of about maybe uh, 1,000 graduate students. And of course, we do offer you a chance to live on campus. So let me load my presentation here. Okay. All right, so uh, in terms of our facilities, um, we have excellent facilities, both for STEM and some of the other majors that we offer, 56 different majors to choose from. Uh, but for STEM, we offer biomedicine, biotechnology, uh, computational science and engineering, which allows you to do uh, majors like artificial intelligence, uh, robotics, drone technology. And of course, we have our honors program for math and science. So you can go into STEM, uh, which is an honors program and uh, teach math and science. Uh, we also have a great facility within the STEM building. So we have a special mechanism in that building where you see the three young people right there with the white coats. We have what is called the cave, which is a 3D simulator that allows you to see a person's brain, their heart, their lungs, and the 3D model that we have in there. So it allows you to identify what's wrong with the patient. And that's what we use. We use our, our mathematical and technical skill to develop new strategies to help people on the medical side. Also, if you decide to do any of the other majors, as you can see, we have a beautiful campus here in Union, New Jersey. 
uh, including our new uh, business school, which is here on the left, top left. Uh, the uh, teacher right there in the middle with the, with the little children, that would be our school of education. The building to the right of that would be our history department that allows you to do a pre-law option if you ever thought about law school. The building to the left of the Kane logo in the middle there, that's our new science building, which is part of Hennings College, uh, which is for mathematics, science, and technology. The young man with the pink shirt right below the Kane logo, that's our school of architecture and graphic design. The building to the right of the, the young man with the pink shirt, that would be our North Avenue Academic Building, which is for computer science and biology health professions for anyone interested in the medical profession. And of course, to the left of the uh, young man with the pink shirt is our graduate school, which is Nathan Weiss College. So it offers master's and PhD programs. Um, furthermore, uh, why choose Kane University? Not only for our great facilities, but also uh, for three reasons. Number one, we are considered one of the most affordable public universities in New Jersey. So in terms of that, you're getting excellent value in terms of coming to Kane. Um, the second reason would be our student services, which is our, you know, our registrar, our admissions, and of course our career services that help you with things like resume writing and interview skills, two very important things that you're gonna need in the future. We have a career services office where you can go in there, introduce yourself. We help you organize your resume. We do practice interviews for the future. So when you have a real interview, you're gonna be nice and relaxed, have a nicely organized resume and to top it all off, you have your education from Kane. Keep in mind that we offer all three levels like I mentioned before in terms of education. So bachelor's, master's and PhD. And then of course, the third and final reason is our study abroad program. I wanted to focus on this campus in China. We're one of the only US universities to have a presence in that country uh, because we have a great relationship with their educational uh, program over there. So they allowed us to set up a, a full-blown Kane University campus in China, Wenzhou, China to be precise. It doesn't cost anything extra, which is the greatest part. Uh, we'll take it a step further and pay for your plane ticket. Your only responsibility as a student is to take advantage of the opportunity. And I feel that this opportunity is, is great because it allows you to break out of your shell. Most of you are comfortable, you know, being in a nice little circle, don't like to move away too far from home. This will be your opportunity to experience a different culture and a different way of doing things, which is important for your career in the future. Okay, so the last thing that I wanted to mention to you about Kane would be how to apply to Kane University, which I think is, is extremely important. So let me just scroll through this uh, presentation here. There's two ways to apply to Kane. You can use the common application, which a lot of high schools love to use. But of course, we have our application on our website, which is apply.kane.edu. Both options are, are, are feasible. You can, uh, you know, whatever your prefer preference is, keep in mind that we are a test optional university. So there's no ACT or SAT required. We're gonna focus on your GPA, your cumulative GPA from high school. And of course, your letters of recommendation and your essay to make a decision. If you're able to come to one of our events, you're gonna see that we give out a special fee waiver code for the application fee, which is about $75. Uh, as you can see on the screen there, the, you know, this is for the, the seniors who are graduating from high school this year, which is KISD 2022. But if you see us at any events, we have brand new codes to provide students and family, so then that way you don't have to pay for the $75 application fee. I'll be around if you have any questions and thank you very much for joining today. Perfect, as a reminder, if you all have any questions, feel free to go ahead and drop those in the chat um, so we can get to them as soon as possible, but we will keep things going with the University of Connecticut. Hi folks, thank you so much for being here tonight and having me. Uh, my name is Dan T. I'm an admission officer at the University of Connecticut. I do work with all students from New Jersey. So if you have any questions after the presentation, definitely feel free to let me know. And we will just hop right in here and switch that. So UConn is a flagship state institution in Connecticut. Uh, we were founded in 1881, predominantly as an agricultural school, uh, but have grown to support numerous different academic programs and majors across 10 schools and colleges. Um, top 25 public research one unit about 24,000 students uh, across five campuses. We will focus on stores today. That's the main campus in Northeastern Connecticut. We do have four regional campuses um, moving into where we're located throughout the state. Stanford, I will say, um, sometimes students from New Jersey will decide to start there uh, since it is a little bit closer to, um, to home and there are a lot of opportunities uh, surrounding the arts and then also business since it is so close to New York City. 
Uh, typically, students will study at the Stores campus up in the northern corner there, or northeastern corner rather. And um, a little bit about where our students are coming from. So we do have students that come from all over the world, um, representing 90 different countries across the world, uh, making up about 15% of our overall population, and then 47 out of the 50 states in this country, um, making up about 25 to 30% of our population for any given year. So as a you know, state institution, we do have probably about 60 to 40 when it comes to in-state versus out-of-state international. Um, I will say those four regional campuses definitely skew that number. So if you're on the stores campus, you will meet students from basically any walk of life um, across our country, across the world. A little bit about athletics um, and student life. Um, so a lot of folks do come to know who we are through athletics and then come to find out that we do have you know, top level academics. Um, basketball is definitely uh, one of our most notable uh, athletic programs. The men's and women's team have won numerous uh, athletic NCAA tournaments, uh, but we do pretty well in all of our athletics. We do have club sports as well as um, intramural sports, 700 plus campus organizations and clubs. When it comes to housing, we have 100 plus residence halls uh, ranging from traditional dorm suite and then also apartment style. Past that, we do have um, living and learning communities on campus, eight resident dining halls, um, several different restaurant options throughout campus, and then um, our own ice cream on campus. So as an agricultural school, uh, we do have a dairy herd on campus in stores, and they actually produce uh, Yukon ice cream for us. So that is some of the best ice cream in New England. I'm a little biased by that for sure. Um, if you're on campus at any point, definitely give it a try. If you're not lactose intolerant, of course. Um, a little bit about academics, though. So 115 plus majors, 320 plus minors across 10 schools and colleges. We do have numerous STEM offerings uh, as a research one university. There are a lot of opportunities for academic research. Um, engineering is probably one of the biggest STEM, you know, schools, standalone colleges. Uh, we do have a lot of programs within bio biological sciences um, and then several other programs within the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, um, but there are a lot of opportunities. Average class size is around 25 to 30 students. Um, student to faculty ratio is 16 to one. Um, on the stores campus, we do have about 14,000 students that live there and then about 18,000 that study. And our most popular majors would be uh, psychology and then biology. But moving into a little bit more about our selective programming um, on the right there, selective programming, the schools on the top, they are direct entry. So if a student is admitted as a first year, they're in it for all four years. Junior entry there, you do have to take prerequisite coursework and then apply um, to be admitted to those schools. And then on the left, special programs, those are conditional admit programs for students where they're basically admitted at you know, the time of admission of the first year. And as long as they maintain their academics at the minimum for those graduate programs, they'll gain admission in four years. Obviously conditional, as I said, so they have to do the work throughout that process. Um, but it is a really a trajectory and a clear route for those students to get to graduate school. UConn does have an honors program. Um, about 560 students, roughly, or 550 a year, are um, admitted or enter that program. We had an incoming class of about 40, um, 3,700 last year, probably around the same this year. So um, when it comes to our admissions, our, our admission rate is right around 50%. So we are a pretty selective institution. This is just a little bit about our requirements. I do want to say that we are test optional for next academic year and will most likely continue to be test optional through 2025. Um, that hasn't become official, but I have heard a lot from um, supervisors and folks on campus that we will most likely continue past to 2025. We are members of the Common Aim Coalition application as well. And then this is just a little bit speaking about uh, our holistic review process, just to say that we're not just going to look at your transcript or your test scores and make a decision. We will we'll look at every component of the application that you submit to us. So definitely take your time, submit letters of recommendation if you'd like, college essay is required, obviously. Um, and then just make sure you're paying attention to all of the things that you're submitting. And then finally, closing with our timeline, December 1st is the priority uh, timeline or deadline rather for merit scholarships and honors consideration. They are the actual deadline cutoff for um, those special programs that I mentioned. So important to keep that in mind. January 15th is the regular deadline. We are a regular decision institution. Um, so we drop um, decisions right around March 1st, February 15th is the FAFSA deadline. And that gives students about two months to make their decision um, as May 1st is the national candidate reply date. 
but thank you all so much for coming tonight. Um, I will put my information in the chat if you have any follow-up questions, and I wish you all the very best of luck. All right, and our final institution of the night is SUNY Potsdam. Hello, how are you guys doing today? Just sharing my screen really quick. All right, awesome. So uh, my name is Daniel Del Sol Lowry. I'm from um, Queens, New York, and SUNY Potsdam is a small college, you could say, in New York that's located all the way upstate. It's about 75 miles away from Canada, so it definitely is a trip if you're from uh, one of the New York City boroughs, but we also do have a huge out-of-state presence as well. Um, so a few things just about me before we start. I actually was getting recruited by Division ones, twos, and threes before I came here. And I kind of fell in Potsdam's lap in August because I didn't really know I was going to come here. So I didn't have a regular, um, what you what could you say, college process in terms of making sure I get this deadline for some scholarship. It was kind of either this or a junior college because I was trying to play basketball. So when I came here, I didn't really know much about it, except that I came on a visit and it looked pretty beautiful. So as things went along over the years, I kind of noticed that being a smaller campus helped me make a lot of connections. And one of them was becoming an admissions counselor now and then also being an assistant on the men's basketball team. So it, that just kind of ties into us having an 11 to 1 student to faculty ratio. We have about 3000 undergraduate students on a great year. So usually it is smaller than that just because we do focus on a lot of participative activities. Uh, we are the smallest and oldest four-year college in the SUNY system. Um, the, the biggest thing for me that I didn't know about until I got there was that we were ranked number one in the SUNY for food. Uh, so we actually have nine different spots on campus that you can get food from. Um, and I, I would say it's a wide variety of anything from, you know, pasta, paninis, burgers, things like that. So if you're from a city, kind of like a bodega. Um, so another thing is we have over 400 fine arts events performances a year because we actually do have something called the Crane School of Music that I'll get into a little bit later. Um, but that's a pretty much the prestigious music school that we have. Uh, we also have 19 intercollegiate sports teams. Uh, we have four colleges within our 10 mile radius. So one of them is Clarkson University that we actually have a joint program with for engineering, which is basically a three plus two, where you would do three years at our school, get your Bachelor of Arts in Physics, and then you would graduate from SUNY Clarkson as well with, um, what do you call it? Sorry, I'm twisting my tongue here. You would graduate with basically either electrical engineering or mechanical engineering, either one of your choice. But the, the real play with that is that at SUNY Pasa, you're going to pay our tuition because Clarkson is, is way more expensive than it would be if you got into our school from the jump. Um, so we do have 52 majors and 67 minors. Um, the three schools we do have on campus, like I kind of mentioned before, is the Crane School of Music. Then we have our School of Arts and Sciences and then our School of Education and Professional Studies. So just to piggyback off of that, one of our top majors we actually have is our early childhood education and adolescence education. Um, so it's a pretty intense program where you're pretty much a double major. You're actually an education major and then your second major will be whether it's mathematics, social studies, something of that nature. Uh, we pretty much make you get all of your general education classes out of the way for your first year so that the next three years can be very intensified and based around student teaching. Um, and, you know, in New York, you also do need your master's to teach. So we do have the master's programs here as well. Um, so just to go down the line, the Lafayette Center for Applied Learning is pretty much inside of our library and it's home to a lot of places on campus. Uh, so one of the most important things for students usually is internships. So a, a lot of internships, a lot, a lot of our departments will say you can go to Toby White, who's basically our internship guy, and you can plead your case from freshman year so that you're not worried about trying to get an internship junior or senior year and then go into your job. Uh, we also have student research, student fellowships, and then study abroad. Um, the real catch with study abroad is that we work with all of the SUNY. So if there is a place that you specifically want to go to and SUNY Potsdam doesn't offer that, you can actually you can actually go travel with them. So one example would say if SUNY Plattsburgh is right near us and they have a trip to Paris for a STEM field thing that you actually lift up yourself. And unfortunately, because we don't have it, you can still go there with the same pay and everything. And then the last thing we have is the Law Enforcement Training Institute. 
Um, so we actually have a pre-professional training that students can get into if they're interested in anything that has to do with law enforcement. It's basically a full semester that's your junior or senior year. And a lot of the a lot of students get jobs and stuff like the NYPD. Um, they like to work for the FBI, but that that's a growing a growing institute um, over the years for SUNY Potsdam. Uh, so this right here, I don't have to speak much about. I'll let you guys go over the bullets while I go over some of the stuff down here. We have approximately 100 clubs and organizations on our campus. The way it kind of works at a smaller university like ours is if you have the idea of something like robotics and you know that you have a following and you have a four-year plan of how you're going to continue doing this, then they'll probably approve you for a club because the way we see it is the more clubs, the more people that are going to get involved on campus. So we have everything from workshops, concerts, trips, and athletic events. Uh, so we are division three for athletics. Uh, the majority of our sports are in the SUNYAC league. So that's like us, Oswego, Plattsburgh, New Paltz, Brockport, um, and Geneseo. And then a few other things about our school. If you came on a visit and you got to see, we have a rock climbing wall. Uh, we do have an ice arena, an indoor pool, and then a state-of-the-art fitness center. Uh, so the next thing is going to be applying to SUNY Potsdam. So for first-time college students, we're obviously going to go the common application route or the SUNY. I usually recommend the common app just because you can diversify if you have any other options that are you know, out of state that you might be interested in. We do have a $50 application fee. Uh, for us, we're mainly just looking at official high school transcript, one essay, and then one letter of recommendation. Um, to be honest, we are also test optional, like a lot of schools are getting into. Uh, we were test optional before COVID as, COVID as well, and that is kind of how I got into there. Uh, so for financial aid, um, I know this is a, a New Jersey virtual. So for the students here, if you are based out of New Jersey, our out-of-state tuition is around $32,500. Uh, we do offer merit scholarships, though, for anything over an 86. So for an 86 to 89, it would be around $5,000. For a 90 to 94, it would be around $6,000. And then if you have a 95 and above, it could be around $7,500 to $8,000. Um, and the last thing is usually we just emphasize, obviously, finishing your FAFSA early. We are what you call rolling admission, so we don't have a specific date, um, like May 1st, June 1st, like most would have. Uh, we kind of just work with you if you kind of didn't have time to finish something like your financial aid, or if you were in a, a specific program like EOP or Bridges, where you might have extra FAFSA documents that we might need. Um, so to be honest, that that's just the, the gist about Potsdam, I would say. Um, as far as our STEM fields go, um, one of our more popular majors that's been growing is going to be our exercise science field. So our exercise science field is actually, oh wait, I'm sorry, did I stop sharing yet? Yeah, so our exercise science field, we actually do have a pre-professional track and then we have a sports performance track for anybody that wants to get their CSCS and you know work specifically with sports teams. And then our pre-professional track is going to be for occupational therapy or physical therapy. So I'll just drop my information right here if anybody has any questions. And then thank you. All right, it sounds good. Well, at this point, I will get all of our panelists to go ahead and turn their cameras on, turn their, turn their microphones on, um, because we have just a few minutes for a Q&A. Um, and so what I ask for y'all is just to answer in the same order you presented in tonight. But my first question that I have for y'all is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Um, okay, so uh, for the college search process, um, the biggest thing I always tell students is to visit all of the campuses that you're interested in, because um, you know, sometimes students think that they want to go to a big school and they go, to, they visit and they realize that they actually want to go to a small school or vice versa. So you want to make sure that you know exactly what a big campus is versus a small campus versus a medium sized campus, because that's going to be where you spend most of your time for the next four years for nine months out of the year. So I always say that's kind of the biggest thing. visit is a, a really great option uh, for students just to see if um, the school that you're visiting meets the expectation you've set for your college education, but also your college education experience. Um, and we do know that not every student is able to visit each individual school that they're interested in. So uh, whether it be visit or um, do a virtual tour online or, you know, do uh, any sort of virtual thing, uh, look up 
their official YouTube page, uh, just so you can kind of get a better idea of um, the college and, and what they have to offer you. The best advice I would give somebody going through the college search process is to write a list down of what you're looking for in during your college years. Um, for me, I was looking for outdoor adventures and want to do things outside of the classroom, along with the school that had a whole bunch of different degree um, opportunities. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is 70% of students change their major at least three times when stepping onto a college campus. Um, so making sure that you're not locked into something too much so you like the feel of campus, uh, but make sure we fit what you're looking for. Um, you're the one searching for us. So definitely keep that in mind as well. All right. So I would just want to piggyback off what everybody else said uh, in terms of the visiting the campus. But one extra recommendation I want to give you is try to visit the campus during, during the week. So usually these events are scheduled on a Saturday or Sunday. You know, uh, not, not, not every university has like everything uh, available to you. Um, you know, during those events, you know, sometimes the sports teams are, are, are having their athletic ability, uh, you know, activities, excuse me, or, you know, not all representation can be at that, at, at that event. So if you go during the week, you'll see the, a vibrant campus. All the students are taking classes, walking around. Uh, so you get a, a chance to really see what the university is all about. So um, just the same recommendation that everybody else gave, but just make sure that you try to visit during the week instead of maybe a Saturday or Sunday. So I would definitely echo what all my colleagues have said thus far um, to not be redundant. I would definitely say that, you know, just being mindful of any deadlines at any institution that you're applying to is a really big thing. Um, there's, you know, a slew of different types of institutions and sizes of institutions, even just on this call. Um, so it's important because many institutions will have different deadlines. Um, some will be regular, some will be early action, early decision. So it's really important. I know that's a lot of different, you know, things to keep in mind, um, but it's just, you know, make your list of your questions and, you know, the institutions that you're looking at and all those things. And um, just so you're on top of that and that way you'll make sure that all of your things are into the right institutions uh, and you give yourself the best opportunity to be admitted to all your schools. Um, some advice that I would give someone going through the college search process would honestly be to try to get it done early in terms of application process, because the earlier you get it done, the better chance you'll give yourself to visit all of the schools you actually apply to. And I feel like the best way to actually do it is to put is to give that eye test. And once you see everything, you'll actually be able to start minimizing like, okay, this was a huge school, maybe I am a small school person or vice versa. If you're like, ah, this this vibe here just what wasn't it for me. I might need a bigger campus that's a division one instead of a division three. And then again, it would take into account, you know, what your grades are looking like because certain schools might have more scholarship money for what your GPA actually is. So it's a lot, it's, there are a lot of things that you can take into account, but the, the most important thing I would say is to get that eye test and make sure you see it for yourself and the decision will be way easier for you. Well, that is all that we have time for tonight. So thank you all so much for joining us. When you close this window, there will be a link to a quick five question survey. Um, and so we would appreciate any feedback you could provide about your experience here tonight. I also encourage you to check back on the schedule and sign up for more sessions because there are tons more happening tonight. And then finally, you'll be able to find not only this session's recordings, but all of the other ones at strivescan.com slash New Jersey. Thanks so much, everyone, and enjoy your night. Bye-bye. Thank you.